Greetings and welcome to another interesting tutorial. Uh, this is something I've never done before, so bear with me. This is going to be new, but I'm going to do a tutorial on OBS and how I have it set up. Now, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on video quality settings, specifically because that is very subjective. It's subjective based upon what kind of horsepower your machine has, what quality you think looks good. It's going to take a lot of tweaking. I'll give you the numbers I use, and then you can work from there. Tune it upwards or downwards based upon that. Now, we're looking at OBS right here, but uh, I'm not recording with OBS. I'm actually recording with Bandicam. I think I can do... And you'll see the little thing pop up in the top left corner. Easy peasy. Uh, anyway, I use OBS for everything now. OBS Studio, to be specific. I'm on 0.13.4. They use a 64-bit version for Windows, and it works like a champ. It records the exact same way that I tell it to every single time. There's no sync issues. I ran across a lot of synchronization issues with audio. If I was using MP4 and AAC audio in Bandicam, so I had to stop using it. That's when I switched over to OBS Studio because they put in, or OBS Multi-Platform because they put in multi-track audio. When OBS Studio came out and they overhauled a lot of the stuff behind the scenes and just generally optimized it and made it better, I transitioned and I haven't looked back since. And I'm actually quite happy about it. So, the big thing you're going to have to start off on first, of course, is making sure you actually have a profile. I have different profiles for different things. This is streaming to my first channel, my second channel, and my third channel. I have local file, but I also have Minecraft. What the differences between these two? Well, this is actually 1080p 60fps. This is 30fps. I pretty much do everything when I'm doing local recording on this profile. No, so I'm not really going to change it. Now, you can have multiple scene collections for games that are really high performance hogs, and I can't squeeze 1080p out of them for a regular 30fps. It's actually a short list now, but it does still exist. I'll actually go down to 720p and just capture a window, 1280 by 720 but I don't really have to do that anymore. Uh, generally, though, I do everything 1080p, 30fps. I don't really see a big advantage at doing 60fps, mostly because it requires a lot more horsepower, and it increases your render time significantly. So, yeah. Um, I have various different scenes. You're going to start off with a scene that you can grab, and I'm using this one right here, basically. You're going to start up with a scene, and you're going to start putting sources into it. Um, Subnautica. These are different games that I have captured. You do specifically game capture. I type in the name of the game as I've got it open. And standardly, OBS figures out which one I'm talking about and grabs the window immediately. Periodically, I actually have to... I actually have to highlight one of these and hit gear and tell it, no, 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 grab this specific window by executable name. I generally don't use capture any full screen application anymore because the sensing of that is kind of wonky based upon the fact that I standardly don't do actual full screen window games. I mean, full screen games anymore. I do full screen windowed or borderless windowed is what it's called quite a bit. I don't run anything for full screen anymore because full screen changes the uh, brightness on my second monitor. Every time I do that, it resets the brightness on my second monitor. And I kind of hate that. So I do everything borderless windowed. Plus, that means that I can actually mouse out of that window to respond to something in social media like Twitter and then go back to the game. And it makes it a lot easier. It makes it easier with dealing with the recording software, adjusting settings, so on and so forth. Um, this is all the unimportant stuff that you can find tons of tutorials for on YouTube. Dozens and dozens of tutorials tell you how to make scenes, how to add sources to them. That's not really why I'm here. What I'm really here for is this. This is what I am here for. Now, specifically, there is the mic audio and the desktop audio. I have volume set to 100%. Now, really, I standardly down mix to mono a lot on most of my things. Uh, I have it unchecked for some recent projects that I've been doing, but one thing I do usually have is I have my microphone down mixed to mono because what that means is, is that I actually have a microphone, like my blue snowball, I didn't have to worry about this. It was a mono microphone, but the new microphone that I've actually got has stereo sensing capability. So if I'm slightly off to the left of it or slightly off to the right, you can hear the difference. So my microphone is usually down mixed to mono. It was not going to sacrifice any quality. It just makes it easier for the sake of the listener. Here's the important part down here, tracks. Actually, you might have to do sync offset if you have 
a lot of equipment and there's a slight synchronization difference between your mic audio coming in, but I don't know anybody that's actually got a setup that complicated. <clears throat> um, tracks. Okay, basically you can have multiple tracks enabled. If we go into settings right here, there's the general settings. You'll probably never have to mess with those. Stream settings. This is, of course, not a streaming profile. This is a local recording profile. So this is totally blank. <clears throat> Output. This is the important part. So there are multi-track audio capabilities, up to four audio tracks in OBS. Most streaming services that I know of only support one audio track. So you're going to want to make sure you have that set to one. Encoder is very subjective, but since I have a really good NVIDIA card, I have an NVIDIA GeForce 960, I can actually use the NVIDIA NVENC encoders to offload some of the CPU and have it CPU work and take it and have it taken over by my GPU. But this is streaming settings. We're not going to really mess with that right now. I'm here for recording. I have a specific recording path. This is a hard drive that is entirely empty except for this folder. The only purpose of this hard drive is to record stuff to it. That's it. So I know very distinctly, all I have to do is glance at how much free space there is on that hard drive, and I know exactly how much free space I have to work with. Now, as you'll notice right here, audio tracks for recording. This is all local recording. I have three of them checked, one, two, and three. If you have more complicated audio, like if you have friends coming in on TeamSpeak and you've split that off a separate way, you can do that there. By the way, that is one way where you can get audio off sync is if you're using a patch cable software program to route TeamSpeak through a virtual patch cable, you can actually have that come in slightly out of sync with the rest of your game and mic audio. So be warned of that. You have to delay everything else to have it catch up. Uh, basically, it's it's pretty aggravating sometimes. Um, I have three audio channels checked. That means there's going to be three audio tracks on everything I record. Custom muxer settings, I don't mess with it. Rescaling is if you're going to actually record a 1080p screen, but output a 720p video. Some people might want to do this for the sake of size, video size. Some people might want to do this for the sake of actually slimming down their render times. Both are valid reasons. Um... Profile main, I do constant bitrate specifically because if you actually do variable bitrate, you can run into some problems with some simpler editing software. Some simpler video editing software doesn't like VBR. Variable bitrate confuses it. It's easier to edit. It's more universally accepted. So I use constant bitrate. And I use a bitrate of 25,000. I know some people use 30, 35,000. I know some guys that capture at 60,000 when they're doing shooters and stuff. Now, here's the thing. The higher the bitrate, the higher the quality. Yes, but there is a diminishing return over that. If you compare a 50,000-bit a 50, bit rate capture to a 60,000-bit rate capture, you will be hard-pressed to see a difference. If you compare 50 to 80,000, 50,000 to 80,000, you will be very hard-pressed to see much of a difference at all. There is a cap where it just becomes less productive and you're wasting hard drive space. There's tons of videos on this kind of stuff out there on YouTube that you can actually look up where people do all of the math. I really encourage you to do so. For me, I do a 25,000 bit rate. Some people do 30 to 35,000. I think that's a valid range, 25 to 35,000. Just remember, anything that you upload to YouTube is probably going to get processed down to 16,000 to 24,000 range. YouTube will not say specifically what they actually mix down to for a bit rate. They have not given hard limits. I think it's higher for some channels and lower for others based upon how big your channel is. I also think it's dependent upon if it's a 720p video, a 1080p video, or a 4K video. They do support 4K video uploads now. So that's going to change it. In the grand scheme of things, though, I use standardly about 25,000, maybe 30 to 35,000 if I'm recording something like Subnautica. It's about it. The larger your size, yes, the more quality you're going to get, slight increases, but the larger your file size is also. Now let's go to the audio tab over here. I have audio bitrate of 128. Yes, I could boost this all up to 320, and yes, it doesn't actually take up that much space. Audio takes up a small fraction of the entire size of a video. Small, small fraction. What it does determine, however, is the overall quality. 128 is good enough 
with some games that have higher end audio, like when I was recording Alien vs. Alien Isolation. Alien Isolation, I actually started off doing 192 and then eventually boosted it up to 320. I think that's valid. A lot of times I hover at 192 because I think it's a good middle line. Now, that is basically it for the advanced mode for output, for recording, and for audio. The big important thing here is audio tracks, one, two, and three. You're going to want to have at least three checked, maybe four depending, but I would say three. If you go over to audio over here, sample rate. I make sure that my sample rate matches up on all my devices. In my Windows control panel, my speaker sample rate is set to 44.1 kilohertz. My microphone is set to 44.1. My uh, capture software is set to 44.1. Everything's on the same speed. This is actually very, very important. Um, you can hit some points where you'll get slow down, stretching, or out of sync issues because one thing is running at a faster hertz rate than others. It's not common, but it does happen. Now, you can do capturing mono or stereo. I actually like to have the game audio in stereo because it really can mess with people's heads when you're playing a game like, when you're watching a video of a game like Alien Isolation and it's dark, you're watching somebody's playthrough and you start hearing those noises off to the sides, just like the guy playing the game is. That's really good for experience and I like that. Now I have my standard devices, speakers for my desktop audio and my line in from my microphone as my uh, mic auxiliary. You could, you might have more devices than that, but that's what I'm actually working with right now. Um, that's the important stuff. I mean, that's like the important configuration things. Now we get into the nitty gritty. When you get down to mixer, this is where we come back to this, okay? Every device that you actually have will show up here in any given scene. I have more complicated scenes that have three and four devices listed on them. I have one that has five. And it's like webcam. Since I don't have my webcam turned on, it's not showing up right here. Um, I have another uh, extra, a third, I mean, a second webcam source that I actually can use for more complicated projects that I haven't had to yet. And that would show up as a fourth option. But basically, what I do is I get my microphone and my game, my desktop audio, okay? I use, like I said earlier, I choose to mix down my microphone to mono. It just makes it simpler for the sake of positioning. Uh, if my microphone is slightly off to the right, based upon where my, my microphone arm puts it, I don't have to worry about sounding like I'm in somebody's left ear or right ear for the entire video. This just makes it a lot easier. I put everything on track one, always. That's just the way I work. And there's a specific reasoning behind that. If I go into, well, let's go bring this over here. If I go into a specific video and open this up in VLC, it is going to default to the first track of audio when I am test viewing it to make sure that it recorded right, make sure I didn't get any glitches in my audio. I want to hear one thing real quick where I've got my game audio and my microphone audio turned on so I can hear them both in comparison. That will, after I get through recording, that will very quickly give me a mental note of, oh, I'm going to have to boost the microphone audio or, oh, I'm going to have to lower the game audio, whichever. So if you do this, Track one, which is what VLC always de defaults to when it plays a video, track one always has both things enabled. It's a quick, easy preview. There's another reason behind this. If my editing software screws up, you might not be using Premiere Pro like I do. You might be using something like um, Serif Movie Plus 6, or you might be using um, Magic's uh, Movie Edit Pro 2015, or you might be using Sony Vegas or whatever. VSCD, I think, is another one. Um, heck, you might be using Blender. You might have a problem where you throw a recorded video in and for some reason, track two and track three, it's not seeing it because there's a lot of simpler video editing software out there that don't see multi-track audio. This means that you always have one track that's got both audios on it. You always have one track where you have everything. That is important. That is a fallback measure. It is a redundancy measure. It means I don't have to worry about my editing software potentially screwing up. Now, I have Adobe Premiere Pro. It is professional grade software, and that software has worked for me 100% of the time, with the exception of one update, one software update that got pushed out, and Microsoft decided to do a Windows update and reboot the machine midway through the software patching. That was Microsoft's problem, not Adobe's, but Adobe fixed it. So thank you, Adobe. But 
Otherwise, it never crashes. It always works. Anything that I put into it and tell it to edit and rent, tell it to render, I get out exactly how I told it to. Precisely. So I don't have to worry about this anymore, really. But it is a just-in-case measure in, if in, in any incident I decide to stop using Premiere Pro. I can't afford to pay for it anymore. It is 20 bucks a month, et cetera, et cetera. For you that have less reliable editors, I cannot stress this enough. Just check everything for number one. Just do it. Then what you do is you do audio for number two, game audio, your desktop audio. Just check that and uncheck it for microphone. Then you check microphone for number three and uncheck it for desktop audio. This way you have separate tracks. This is how you separate things, ladies and gentlemen. This is how you get audio track number one has everything. Audio track number two is only the game. Audio track number three is only me. This is really important because now when I throw this video into Premiere Pro, I can specifically tweak my, my sound levels up and my game audio down. So I can make sure the audience can hear me over the game audio, or I can make sure that the game audio gets heard and I'm not drowning it out because it was too soft or whatever. This really does help you correct problems. Periodically, I'll get games that have glitches in audio and you'll hear this tick noise that'll pop in every once in a while when they're changing scenes or going to a cut scene or whatever. It is a situation where now you have separate audio tracks and you can cut that out. Do you have a really bad cold? You can cut the sniffles out on your microphone audio track and not have to worry, or sneezes, and not have to worry about it affecting the game audio. It makes it so much easier. This is the important part right here. This really is what I'm stressing right now. And I'm going to go to it again. When you're looking at this main screen, you've got your different audio sources. Just click this gear right here and adjust your checkboxes accordingly. If you want to mimic the way I've got mine, everything's on one, game audio's on two, microphone's on three. Every video I get is recorded this way. I automatically know how it is and what tracks are important, what tracks need what filters when I load it into Premiere Pro. I've been doing it this way for the better part of six months now, I think it is. And it makes it so much easier. It makes it so much better. I really do love it. So consider doing that yourself. Maybe it'll help. Maybe it'll hurt. I don't know. This has basically been a starter tutorial on getting multi-track audio and audio set up in OBS. I'm hoping you guys are going to find stuff like this useful. If you've got other questions, please let me know. I would love to help in any way that I can. I will catch you folks later. Have a great day. Bye-bye.